Hello and welcome back to Sports for Dummies. In today's episode, we are previewing the Melbourne Football Club for the 2024 AFL season. Johnny, let's get into it. It has been a really tumultuous, if that's the right word, off-season for Melbourne. There is a lot of problems going in with that club. One with Joel Smith and the drug issues. Um, Clayton Oliver and his personal issues off the field. Rumours about Simon Goodwin. You had Simon May a couple of years ago knock, knocking out Jake Melcham. There's just a lot of things outside of the football club that is really affecting their off their on-season performance, and it's really sad to see because this list is fantastic and should be they, they should be enjoying a dynasty right now. The timing couldn't have hurt this one too. The day we're doing the Melbourne Review, Angus Brayshaw announces his shock retirement due to his amount of concussions that he's been getting. So an unfortunate sort of end to a great career, an absolute superstar of the game and um, 28 years old, pretty young to be calling it time. And we will we'll talk about him at the end of the video. But, yeah, he was a heart and soul player, um, clearly had a lot of courage, um, but he just received too many knocks. Yeah. And, you know, his medical professionals have said, look, it, it, it's time to end. And it's, um, yeah, another thing to add to the Melbourne issues because um, he's a quality player and what you hear, he's he's very valuable member. So it's, it's, re- it's really sad to see, but, you know, the season will go on. Um, yeah, but they've been ridiculed across the uh, the off season. Joel Smith, yep, back at the end of last season, uh, apparently he's a drug trafficker now. Yeah, uh, so he's facing a potential four year ban from the AFL uh, if he's found guilty um, of of drug trafficking, which well, you, is um, shocking. I mean, players they can go through your phones. Um, fancy that though. His dad did get a one point four million dollar concussion payout. Uh, from the AFL. Okay. Oh, that's a bit weird. Timing on all of this. Angus retires. We, we, I don't know. We're conspiracy going on. apparently anyway. But nah. I, I do think, look, that I feel like that's a bit of a poster. They're trying to poster boy True. Joel Smith. I mean, Clayton Oliver's had his own issues. And, and like, I mean, you look at what Luke Beveridge, right? He's the Western Bulldogs coach. Mm-hmm. He's had his own problems with Bailey Smith being found, you know, having some recreational drugs. Luke Beveridge came out and said, look, he had at the time a 21-year-old and a 23-year-old son or sons and said he reckons this recreational stuff should just be, you know, take take it out. We understand these guys are going to try and stay fit and healthy. It's their lives, it's their bodies and yeah, it's a, it, it, is, it is a hard one to gauge. But for, you know, a four-year ban for Joel Smith, I think they're just trying to make an absolute point out of him. But there's other players who are doing it who bring a lot more to the game and it's just unfortunate. I think right, wrong place, right time um, for him uh, and the AFL are really trying to exploit that. Well, it's an interesting one. It's a different conversation, Re- not not just in not, sport. Recreational, yeah. should recreational drugs be legalised as a whole? Um, and we can speak about that at length. The fact of the matter is though, Melbourne, regardless of what's right and wrong, are under massive pressure. Yeah. Joel Smith, Clayton Oliver's got his off-field issues and personal issues. Stephen May is knocking people Steve, out. Stephen to- May had his <laughs> issues with Jake Bel- Melsham. Um, Rumours about Simon Goodwin have been surfacing, you know, since they won the grand final. What's that about? The same thing that we were just talking about. Oh, yeah. so this okay. Is, there's, in there's the same a, situation. So, so there's a culture at Melbourne now and this is really sad because... 18 months ago, the Melbourne Football Club were on top of the world. They won the grand final and it was the second, they had the second biggest average winning margin in a final series, second only to the Essendon Footy Club of the year 2000. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal team. Hmm. By round 10, they won their first 10 games the next year. They this were is on 20 top, and tw- 2022. This was in 2022. I generally thought we were watching a dynasty. But halfway through that year, there was, I think it was very hard pressed to go against them that they're not going to repeat. And since then, they've fallen off a cliff. Um, and we're gonna we're gonna dive into it. And it's a real sad thing because this is a, this is a fantastic team. Stephen May said it perfectly um, at the best and fairest, um, talking about you know Collingwood winning the premiership. And he's, he, he wrote, we sit there on grand final day and watch them hoist the cup and get the medals. I'm sitting there 
geez, our team's so much better than these guys. Mm. And I can understand that because two years ago, where was Collingwood? Melbourne had just had this amazing run. Yeah. And now they're watching another side who I guarantee you he means every word that they think they're better than Collingwood. And where where are Melbourne now? They've let, they've they've exited out in two straight final years. They outscored each team, Collingwood and Carlton, in their finals, and they were pipped. Mm. So I, I mean, two finals exits in a row, both of which they scored eighteen and eighteen goals, twenty six points. But that's so, combined. That's combined in both those finals. So you look at that and you're like, gee, they're not. They're not. They had their chances. It's well, Carlton, a matter of Carlton pipped them at the end. Yeah, and, uh, a one play acres goal. M- mark show. in front of it, stole the show. Like I, w- I was at that game. I'm a Carlton supporter, and I, I, I thought we were done. Yeah. And a swing, a swing kick from Weedering to Hollands to Doherty to Acres, and it was a beautiful moment. But it just Melbourne should be better than this. Oh, hun- their Melbourne li- should their be better list, than this. If you go through, I mean, last year, 16 wins, seven losses. It's a f- f- fourth on the ladder. Yep. To, that's, that's, to go out in straight sets and they had the opportunity and like you said, 2021, they came out, they won the granny. They had the chance to probably back it up. They, they thought they were going to build a dynasty team and they had every right to. I was, I was one of them. Their midfield was solid. They had the best ruckman in the game. Their back line. Their back line is, is, is a, it's like a brick wall. Um, the only – and we will go through this side. The only, I guess, slight weakness to them was their forward line, but that's only because they didn't really have a true key forward. But yep. they, they still kick goals. They had a lot of small and medium players. Um, and just their top-end talent, like Oliver and Petrarca, are like at their best, uh, two top five players. Mm. It's Yes, this off-field stuff, regardless of what you, what you think or your politics are, it's affecting the club. A hundred percent. It's affecting the plot. It's, it's frustrating. The and I mean, I've never been in this situation. Like I remember like, as an Essendon supporter, it's pretty hard when they had the whole Asada thing. Yeah. Essendon were never up there though in contention, sure. right? They never won sure. that, you know, a granny. And now to have all these things happen, it's, it's well, kind that's of a good, a, That's a good example. Essendon have, have not really recovered. No, and that's what I'm trying to say. I, I can only feel and imagine how the Melbourne supporters must be feeling right now. I mean, today... One of your best midfielders just ups and leaves because he has to. You've got Clayton Oliver, who you don't know if he's coming back, and he's not even necessarily. He's on the best twenty-two, but he might not be playing. Yeah, to, to be confirmed. It's a You've big got one. this Joel Smith, who's facing. He's potentially going to face a four-year ban. All these things. Simon Goodwin's up in the air. Gary Lyons called them out and on their reputation. Uh, it's it's a tough one. So I feel for all the Melbourne supporters. Let's jump straight into the t- they're, they're before t- before we do before we do that. What would be annoying as a Melbourne supporter for the bulk of the two? Well, really, since the sixties, mm. Melbourne have been pretty irrelevant. Like there's been a lot 100%. of media accuracy, and especially for the two thousand and tens. Oh man, they bottom, they, bottom. they were a bottom side. They did a lot of work to get here, and good on them. Yeah, don't don't piss it away. Don't climb the mountain. Don't don't piss don't piss it away. This team is too good, and it's it's an insult. It's it, do it for yourselves. Hundred percent. Oh, my throat made a funny sound then. No, and that's that's kind of, I guess, the lead into and the reason for that is you probably clicked on the title. You know, which path? Are you going to take the narrow path? What are you guys going to do? You've, you've had 21, 2021 won the granny. You've had every right to be in the granny again, going out back-to-back straight sets, just not good enough. And now this off-field yep. sort of shit that's happening, it's just not It's not what they need and I, I feel for the supporters out there. So if they can snap their culture back together, yeah, I think uh, it's, uh, it's all in between the years for them. So we'll go through the team. Everyone who's watching, you'll be able to see now. We've just put up a little field. So Johnny, run us through the back line. So this, is, so this is where, because I'm going to be positive here now. This is where Melbourne. <laughs> ha- this is where Melbourne have a lot to be excited for. Yeah. And why this off-field stuff would be so frustrating. Look at this back line. Stephen May, who is one of the best key defenders in the game. He's good one on one. He's a great. He's a he's a great interceptor. He's got a beautiful long long kick. Jake Lever, what a fantastic year after his first year from injury, is arguably the best 
interceptor in the game. Yeah. Trent Rivers is is an up and rising star. Adam Tomlinson's finding his form back at Melbourne and a real identity. Yeah. And Christian Salem in that premiership year in 2021, he was he. Off the halfback, he was like a general. He's not like the he's Saad. Not fast. He's not like the Saad and Basha Hooli where he would take on, you know, running bounces with pace. But he is so he he is smart with he's football. He's calculated and he hits targets. Yeah. Like that that is an absolute fantastic back line. That's a solid He knows how to get. swing the ball very, very yeah. well. And you can see that he he like you said, he's that general, he's the coordinator. And he's he's he, like you said, he doesn't have that run, that burst, that speed, but he's he just doesn't he need it because he's nah. he's smart with his movement. Hundred uh, percent. and then you've got Judd McVee as well. Yep. Uh, run through to the midfield. You've got Lockie Hunter. Pretty good inclusion. He came through last year, didn't he? He, he was came, from the dogs. He's from the dogs, so he he can find plenty of the football. Pretty good user by foot. You got Ed Langdon at the heat, the height of Melbourne's powers. He's arguably the best. He's the best running wingman in the league. And then you got Clayton Oliver for all the stuff that we just said. This guy's twenty six years old, and he's won. Let me let me bring that up. He's won three best and fairest. He's been voted the coach uh, the coaches association. Award top player twice, four mm. time All Australian, and when they were doing un- when he was under twenty two, he made the side every year. This guy is an absolute weapon. He can find the ball. He can create space with his hands. Mm. Um, he can kick a goal when he needs to. Yeah, if he can get his mental capacity right, he his best football. Like he's tw- twenty six years old, and he's twenty six years old. Between him and Petrarca. Um, and a lot of Melbourne have a lot of, like, at his best, they'll pick him over Petrarca. I, I don't necessarily agree with that. But a lot of them do. The, the guy's absolutely special. Well, they've got Can- two of the, I, I would say Petrarca and Oliver, two top ten, or well, actually arguably in the top seven best midfielders in the league at the at, moment. At, at their best, they're top five. Yeah. When, in 2022, when they won ten, there was a genuine argument that those two were the best players in the league. Yeah. Yeah. I generally thought that. No, I, I agree. Ge- I generally thought that. Now we move to their forward line, which is an interesting. That that's probably their the, a, a little bit of a weakness, but there's still a lot of talent. Mm. Um, this is where the importance of Van Ruin is going to be this year, and we'll run through players to watch. You got Pickett, who's an excitement machine. Melksham can hit the scoreboard. Neil Bullen's a hard hard hitting defensive forward. Um, and Bailey Fritch as a lead-up option. Yeah. Um, Harrison Pretty there as well. He's been more in the back line. Um, Did you call him Pretty? Harrison a petty, Pretty. Petty. Harrison Pretty. But Harrison yeah, that, Pretty but ba- and is- Bailey Fritch as a – I mean, he kicked six goals in the granny yeah. in 2021. Look, he, he plays – like you said, I think the only thing that they're lacking, but Van Royen is going to be that, you know, key forward. I mean, they had Ben Brown, but I think Van yep. Royen's come in taking that spot. Bailey Fritch, uh, he plays bigger than he is too. He's uh, a good he, lead up. He's, he's good yeah. on the ground. He's good lead Great up. Kick. He's good overhead. Yeah. He's he's like that traditional forward, yet he's just not as big. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I really like, I mean, Malksham's always been a great addi- uh, addiction, addition, addition uh, especially coming through from Essendon. Uh, Cozzy Pickett, what an electric player. He turns on a game and can... Uh, I hate, I hate, uh, he, I hate, he, he hate it him when we play him. Carlton supporter. Oh, he just always, kick, he just always, he just always kicks goals in the absolute dying moments of a game. Yeah. And then you, and then you've got in the, in the ruck or following, you've got Max Gorn, the best Ruckman in the league, Jack Viney, absolute bull, goes in, gets the ball. And then you've got oh, their BNF, Christian, Christian Petrarca. Well, Jack Viney's like their Joel Selwood. I'm not yeah. saying he's as good as Joel Selwood, but he puts his head over the ball. He's hard as nails. And Petrarca's like their danger field, explosive. Mm. Um, Petrarca, and I think Petrarca can get even better. And we'll go with, again, we'll go into that and players to watch. But he kicked 29 goals, 34 last year. So if he kicks a little bit straight, straighter, he's good one-on-one. He's like Dusty in that regard. He's yep. good overhead. He's got that powerful explosion that Danger has. Yep. Um, he's a, like looking at this team. You said the only inefficiency with Petrarca is his kicking, right? Well, the last two years he's kicked more points than goals. Yeah, that is that is a big that is a big thing because a player of him he gets a lot of opportunities. Yeah, and he can hurt sides. But look at that team. Yeah, it is a travesty they are where they are in terms of what we're talking about. And then they've got good depth. 
Yeah. Um, Bowie, Chandler, Chandler kick, finished fourth or fifth in the in their goal kicking. Tom Sparrow had his best year, averaging 17 touches off the bench last year. And they've brought McAdam um, over from Adelaide. So this Melbourne He's a high-flying forward. Who, you can take correct. a mark, that's for sure. So it's going to be exciting for them. I think they've got a lot of potential. And then, I mean, you've got... A, a lot of good reserves as well. They've got a good VFL squad and a lot of players who are missing out on a game. So it's not like they don't have the team and the roster to actually perform and get up there and be a premiership contender. Abs- it, it, absolutely. At their best they should be, but there's a lot of question marks at the moment. Um, and this is where they do – there's some injuries going on there. Yeah, um, we'll go into – we'll now jump straight into the ins and outs. They did have a big – well, they did lose a few players, but they've brought in and recruited fairly well. Johnny, run them through, please. So Luke Dunstan retired. Um, Brody Grundy was the biggest one that they traded to Sydney. I think Brody R- Grundy's now being paid by Collingwood and Melbourne. <laughs> um, that was, that was good. That. That was, and this is one thing Melbourne have to answer for. Picking up Grundy was a horrible idea. You got the two best ruckmen, what playing a different spot? Cody Grundy, Grundy ain't a forward. I don't know what they were trying to what they were trying to test there. It was a bad idea from the start. Grundy's was head space was, was there something they knew that maybe we didn't internally? Well, maybe Gorney no, wanted to on paper. To, on paper, yeah. On I know on paper. No, but that's that's the answer. That's the answer. They've picked it. Oh, the, the 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 answer is you got the two best ruckmen. Why wouldn't this work? One. Well, because they fight for the spot. That's what I'm trying to say. Was there something we didn't know is in the sense of the team, they had an inclination that Gorney wanted to go up forward need, or something? Need, wanted you, to- no, no, no. They, they thought they were smarter and picked two the two the two best ruckmen. One Grundy's mentality has dropped since he signed his big deal at Collingwood as evidence he's on another club. Um, and having two, and I said this, why, you know, why Freo might not work, um, having two ruckmen, it, it didn't work. He's gone. They've traded harms to the Bulldogs. He was a really good servant yeah. um, of the club. Hibbard retired, the same thing. Jordan's gone to Sydney. Smith delisted and Kai, Kai Turner is delisted, delisted too. They've also picked up some players though. Yeah, well, they've picked up Jack Billings from the St. So Kilda Football pitch, Club. So he's, he's a very good pickup. He's going to be a great addition to the forward line as well. I think he's almost like that Malksham. Well, nah, he's, he's going to fill in for well, him eventually. Well, he, I think. Well, well, he'll be more. He he's more mid. He'll be a more midfield and pitch up in the forward line. Um, he might he might help take that load with you know Brayshaw going out like play off the wing sort of thing. He can yeah. kick a goal. Um, but yeah, it'll be exciting to see. He can hit the scoreboard, which is really good. Oh, Billings has been... He was predominantly a forward. When played he played midfield as well. Yeah, I, no, no. I know he can play midfield. He had some He has some good games. He can get a lot of disposals. You know, he knows how to find the ball, but he's a very good player um, up forward, uh, in my opinion. He's yep. a good runner too, though, but I think... And he's got a, he's got a good left but, foot kick. But he, it was really clever. Targets. Like, I think Malksham is on his way out. Mm. So I think that's what they're probably looking at going logically. I mean, how are you breaking into that midfield? It's a freaking great midfield. And obviously you're wanting to trade, you know, Petrarca for some well, minutes in forward. Midfield depth on the wing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. So um, you've got they've picked up Kynan Brown and the rookie draft father Stum. Tom Fulton's come over from Brisbane, Marty Hall from Williamstown, Shane McAdam has come from Adelaide. Colton Tholstrup, um, as a as a give me two seconds here. Colton Tholstrup. Folstrup, yeah, number as, thirteen draft pick as a as a forward. Um, interest, interesting. Um, he'll he'll take some time as all key forwards do, and then you got Caleb Winsdor as like a midfielder. So they picked up really well for their midfield and forward. They've got an exceptional roster. They are, it is surprising. Hence, hence why it's there. There is legitimate disappointment about them. Yeah, about them because this is all this is all human error. And it's all off-field stuff. It's all in the head. I don't well, think... Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a culture thing because there's... I mean, it starts with the coach, yeah? <laughs> if the and coach like, is leading the bar. Is, but there's been, there's been rumours since they won the premiership about off-field antics. You're right. Um, and it's filtered through everywhere. Mm. Then you had May knocking out Melcham. Um, like this, it comes. I know we keep coming back to it, but this side is too good, too good to I've be seen doing them that sort play of stuff. too good against yep. 
quality opposition. Now, we'll run straight through the injury list. We'll be short and sharp, but there is, you know, significant losses in that team. So you've got Ben Brown. He's out with a knee to be confirmed. You've got Oliver. Uh, his injury is more personal uh, to be confirmed. Well, then you've got his injuries, off-field stuff. Yeah, it's off-field stuff. Then you've got Tom Fullerton. Hammy. That's a hammy early season. He's going to be a great addition, I think. Was it? He's going to be their second almost ruck. So he's going to be the support for Gorn, which will be really good for them. Then you have Lockie Hunter. Out for his injury is a calf. He's testing for round one, so he might be able to get back. Jake Melksham, he's out with a knee. He's done for the whole year, actually. So he's back in 2025. So, Bill, so Billings is actually going to be taking that, that, that spot. Was an, that was an oversight by us. Sorry, guys. Uh, then you've got Joel Smith, misconduct to be confirmed. Well, you know, four years ban is, yeah, I guess you're going to be out of the team. Uh, and then you've got Pickett suspension yeah. up until round two. So it, it's, a, it's a hard one. Like you look at that, they've lost, you know, Melksham's good player. Bad, that's a big loss in their forward line. Uh, I mean, the great thing is they've got... They can, cu- they can cover Melksham. They can cover Melksham. They, can him. Mel- they, can they cover can't. Melksham. Oliver, though. Oliver's a hard That's one. That's the big one. That's the um, big one. Because Bra- and you might have been, but with Brayshaw going out... It's huge. It, it, there's, it's huge. And, and sorry, and the yeah, the other one who actually was in the team until we saw that... Is Brayshaw, so he he's out as well. So that's a big loss in the ins and outs, uh, in the injury list. That that's going to be look even things, even though there's take so that aside, many things going against them. But there's so many things, and this is the year where they should, if they can knuckle down, and it, it does come from what you said, the leadership. And if the leadership is crumbling, like Goodwin, and you've got all well, this these, is, this is why I like Stephen May- May's. He put the pressure on them. He put the pressure on them and I liked the sort of arrogance. It wasn't arrogance. It was confidence. It's like we should be there. Well, uh, my um, uh, one of my best mates, Dad's plays golf with Stephen May. Okay. At PK. So, yeah, he said he's got it. He's Did he punch very him confident. when he beat him? <laughs> no, no. But he's a very confident guy and it makes sense. He's a great footballer, all Australian. You're going to be like that. So it makes a lot of sense. Now, in light of that, who, like, my players to watch, I, I want to see the club come out and change their culture yeah. in the media. I want to I want to see them. I mean, obviously, the media is going to try and speculate. They're there to, you know, capture all the shit because it's an easy spotlight for them. I don't, I mean, they've just got to knuckle down and do what they're doing. I'd love to see Oliver. Oliver coming back, getting his head in the right frame of mind. Obviously, we don't know what's going on personally. That is his life. Respect it, whatever's going on, but I just want to see him come in. He's got such good talent, like you said, Johnny, for him to be out of the game, it's just not not ideal for them and they need their, you know, best midfielders there. So that would be my... Uh, so in terms of Clayton... Play to watch. Well, in terms of Clayton Oliver, in terms of his football ability, he's an inside player who sets players, can set up players in the clear with his hands. He creates space. He can kick a goal when he needs. So he's just got an unbelievable football brain and he's 26 years old. I would love him to come back and respond yeah. and just come out. The whole club really. They were the words sh- I was looking for. Come out and respond. Just come out and respond and say, I'm that guy because he should, he should be hitting his prime. Well, he that, should be so- genuinely hitting his prime. Well, they're all in their peak. So they're, you know, 26, 28, you know, they're all, yeah. uh, they're all around that age where they're at the elite level and they're at their premium AFL yep. age. So it's it's that age where they're, they're going to be playing prime, prime time. Like it's literally their prime time. So what about you? Is there any other? So, so Oliver, he, I mean, he's the most important one and that's not just from a player. He doesn't have anything to prove as a player. But no. now it's the men- the mental aspect. Um, players to watch. I actually think Van Ruin is the player to watch. He kicked 28 goals last year. And like I said, Melbourne's probably a little bit of a weakness is their forward line their forward with their forward line without a true key forward. He kicked twenty eight goals last year. Um, he leads up well, he marks over he marks well overhead, he's a good kick. If he can go to that other level and, you know, take that to 40, 50 goals, I think that with with Fritch with Fritch bobbing in when Pickett when he's back hitting the scoreboard, mm-hmm. and if their midfield then can kick goals. Melbourne can can buy an extra, you know, 15, 20 goals um, from him at such a young age. I, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a massive fan. Um, 
But then the most person, the important, the one that I love the most. You and I him. said, I said this in 2021 at the start of the year. If Melbourne were to win a grand final, because Oliver was touted their best player, I said. For them to win a grand final, Christian Petrarca will be their Norm Smith medalist. And he is an he he had the best grand final, arguably, of all time. 39 touches and two goals. He is an absolute bull. Of all He's time. He's got the of all time. I reckon it was the, arguably the best grand final of all time in the AFL era. Yeah. Absolutely. Um his explosive prowess is unbelievable. His one-on-one ability say, is fantastic. One-on-one is ridiculous. He, how he creates space. He's smart with the ball. He's one of those players you can't tackle him. He's too. He's too big. What I would love to see from him is Paddy Dangerfield in 2017, which I actually think they're very similar because um, they can both chop the ball up. I think he's got better, slightly better skills. Um, kicked 45 goals in 2017. I reckon Petrarca can get even better mm. and win a Brownlow. And the, yeah. all that happens, he kicked 29 goals 34 last year, and the year before that he kicked more points as well. If he can just cut half of those points out, there's your 45 goals. Now, if he starts kicking 40 goals with the with with the rise of Van Ruin, with the pinching of Fritsch, pick it. This side, this guy's going to be very hard to beat. Well, he finished only, I think it was five votes below Neil last year in the in the Brown, though. Yep. He was fifth. He's always been up there. Uh, oh, he's a beast. He, he's an absolute he's freak. So I he think he impacts it's, the game, which is why I think yeah. he's a ma- he's a pure match winner. And so so is Oliver. Don't get me wrong, but he he's an doesn't impact have player. that. He's, mean. he's one of the best impact player. There. He's like a Dusty. He's like a Danger Field. His best is just as good as those guys. Yeah. At when they when they were at their peak, and this is his time. This is where he can take over. He can take over the league. Yeah, hundred percent. Take over the league and be the best player in the league. Yeah. Well, that brings us to their strengths and weaknesses. Now they've got a lot going for them, like. It, you, it, Blind Freddy could see how good their squad is. Their midfield, their midfield run, the ability to get in, win the ball. Their contested balls, they're strong. They know how to get the ball forward. They've got the best ruckman. The only thing I think they're lacking is that key forward. I think they're recruiting for that, but I think they've also really well, recruited Van, well for the small I forwards. Think Van Ryan, Van like Rowan. what you said, yeah, he'll be he'll be there. Uh, the only, I mean, obviously you've got Stephen May and Lever who are just dominating down back, but you've got a lot of growth from the other players in there as well. So, yep. uh, and a lot of you know time left for them. I think the only thing they'll need to figure out long term will be uh, you know getting another Stephen May down back, and you know maybe getting another draft pick, which I'll probably pick up you know in the following year. Um, but outside of that, I can't I can't really fault that. The only I can't fault that team. Like that is a strong, strong team. They're they're almost like that overpowered Collingwood style. And I understand why May came out and was so direct about saying we're a better team than them. Because like on paper, realistically, they've got two of the best midfielders, the best Ruckman, so they know how to get the ball. They know how to move the ball. It's just converting. And like it comes back to it's that mental edge and being clutch. I think that's the... And they know they can win. I mean, as I said, 18 months, ago, 18 months ago, they had won the premiership, flogged everyone and were 10-0. and zero, And yeah. now we're talking about this. That just doesn't go away. Like, those players are still there. Yeah. Um, they've got a lot of growth from young players in Rivers, Bowie, McVie as well. That's what I'm saying. Like the, you said, you've got, you've got their perfect... You've got that perfect mixture. Like, they're all at prime age as well. Yeah. Um, their strength is obviously... Yeah, is clearly their defense, their star power. They've got star power. Petrarca, Oliver, Gorn. You've got three at their best top ten players. Yeah. Now Gorn is, you know, and Viney's a very good midfielder too. Viney's no slouch. No, no. Viney's no slouch. It's um, not like um, Essendon's. Uh, what's his name? Who did we pick up there? Dylan Sheil. Sheil and Viney remind me the same, but Viney's just ten times a ten times better a player, and it frustrates me. But that's just a comparable, in my opinion. Okay. Um, but so yeah, their start is ridiculous. Vani's ten times harder than Sheely's. That's what I'm saying. That's ten what I'm t- saying. Ten times harder. But they're very like similar in that aspect on the way that they play, the left yep. foot, all that sort of stuff. But yeah, their stardom's ridiculous. I can't fault them. I, I think their strength is just how good they are uh, with their list, like the the depth that they've got in that list too. I think on the weakness side of things is culturally. 
Yeah. Um, their accuracy. They've yeah. got a, They've got a. Not only their forward line, their midfielders like to see the midfielders kick a couple, like a kick, kick more goals. Petrarca, 29-34. Bailey Fritch in that first final against the Pies missed a lot. I was at that Carlton game. They let us off the hook. Yeah. There was a lot of misses. They need to go back to kicking straight. Yeah. That is a weakness on them. Um, obviously, Gorn now probably not as much support as he had. I don't think Grundy is a massive loss because I don't think it actually worked. I don't think at all. I love the way Gorn plays. How good is Max Gorn? What I had. Just go what a freak. do yourself a favor and go watch the prelim final against Geelong in 2021, where he kicked five, and yeah. he 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 plays that old school ruckman way where he holds the pack up, like where people crash into him, like people yeah. are kneeing him in the in the um, kidneys. He's holding up the packs by himself. He's strong. He's he leads by example. But he can kick goals, and he can kick goals. and clutch goals. Not one of those. You know, forwards that you put in. Well, that's why the Geelong game was awesome. When he was selling candy and kicking them from 50, that's which I've nice. never seen him do that in my life. So he, <laughs> he, he, he is getting older though. Selling so a candy. little bit of a little bit of help, would you know, good. W- would be good. Well, Fullerton's that help. And I yeah. think when he's back, they'll train him up to be that yeah. ruck. You know, he'll transition more into the ruck over the next coming years, but he'll be a forward and, and help out as well with being a key forward, I think. So... Uh, that brings us. Did you have anything more in terms of where they need to improve? Obviously, weaknesses for me, the exact same. It's more just that it's between the ears and more their discipline with the way that they're playing. Obviously, you know it's hard when you get a spotlight from the AFL like they have. Uh, I think it can be very unfair. I think what they've done to Joel Smith is, you know, I, I get it. You know, they they're not going to tolerate it and they're going to make someone, you know, know about it so that nothing, no one else does it. But now it's, you know, and then Clayton Oliver, the captain, oh, sorry, the captain, the coach, you know, all these little factors are going to bubble up. Uh, if they can put their head down, let their actions do the talking and just absolutely play football and play to win, it'll actually be a really good year for them. Yeah. Um, I know I had them predicted out. Obviously, losing Brayshaw is a big loss. Uh, I think I had them, I, I predicted them in the predictions. I'm just going to say it straight up. I think I had them out of the eight. Looking at their squad, I revise that completely. But I'll leave that to the past mark. What do you – what's their fixture looking like? Because well, so I know they had – So they have a – they, a dicey one. Like for the first three games, it's doable. Like they've got Sydney and Sydney, which is never easy. Then they've got the Dogs and the Hawks, which they all should win. But yep. Then they have a back-to-back in Adelaide, so Port Adelaide and Adelaide. Then they play Brisbane. Um, then they have Richmond, but then it's Geelong and Carlton. So they've got a – they don't have the hardest run, but they don't have the easiest run. Yeah. And with the injuries and whatnot, you know, they, Melbourne really need to get off to a good start. I want to see them against the Swans in opening round, go over there and win. And they can. And it, yeah, they can. and they can. And they can. They've got, they've got a good record in Sydney. Come out firing and yep. take over. Now, in terms of the pass mark – would you like me to lead off or would you like to start off, Joshy? I'm happy for you to start <laughs> off. Look, uh, I'm, I'm a bit undecided. Okay. Uh, the reason I say it is losing a player like Brayshaw is definitely going to impact their team. Yep. Oliver, you don't know what the season's going to bring. He just mm-hmm. needs to be a lot more. They need, I think, as. Their team needs more clarity around who's going to be playing this year and really, really, you know, where the coach. And obviously I'm sure that they would be right mm-hmm. now going, shit, you know, we're in a bit of turmoil. We need to – it's like that old Rocky saying they've had a lot of punches. Mm-hmm. It's now time to get up mm-hmm. and really start working. They've got the making to get into the into the finals and win a premiership. Mm-hmm. But then you got to remember how bad they have been. You can't throw that out. So you can't forget that they were down on the bottom of the ladder back, you know, 2010. That's why it's sad. And They've it's done all sad. this work just to potentially throw it away. That's that's the only downfall. I think it's it's going to go one of two ways. They're either going to be a really, really good team this year. Mm-hmm. And I think their pass mark for them obviously has to be they can't lose a final. They can't lose. Well, they can't lose the granny as according to Steve May. Yeah, uh, but I genuinely think they can't go. If they go out again and they make the finals and then they go out, mm. they need to win. They need to win. Okay. Yeah, 
I, I think that not necessarily win the grand final. I think they need to get real deep. I think they need to make it to at least the granny or the prelim. I think that's going to be a pass mark. If they do anything less, they'll really drop off. Yep. They'll drop off. They will knock them for six, and then I think a lot of shit will happen, and I think a lot of players. I don't know. That's how I look at it. Sometimes that could be my Essendon brain mm-hmm. kicking in mm-hmm. because I've seen it happen when you when your culture goes to shit. But when you've got a lot of media pressure, uh, I think they're just going to have to put the blinkers on and absolutely turn it on uh, yep. to win this year. So it'll be a hard year for them, but I really think they have the the, the making to win a premiership. Yeah. What about you, Melbourne? The challenge has been set. Everything's against you. You've got injuries. You've got problems with your culture. You've got the media pressure scolding you. Are you guys that one hit wonder or are you guys the dynasty that a lot of us, including myself, think you are? Because going through that list, I knew you guys were good, but going through it and doing the research before before this video, you guys, it's actually criminal to get rid of, to have all this talent and waste it. Like we've said before, you guys have been mediocre and for most of my lifestyle, Melbourne and Carlton have been horrible. And Melbourne winning gave, as a Carlton supporter, gave us so gave much hope, hope. Um, that you can come from the depths of despair. Don't be a one-hit wonder. You have, you have, the t- you've got two on their day, two of the top five players in the league. You've got the best ruckman in the league. You have depth. You've got you're at the perfect age. It is you have such a good list. You've just lost Brayshaw. Use this as motivation, if not for yourself, but for him. Win the premiership for him. Despite all the issues with Clayton Oliver, he has never been bad. He has never struggled on the field. Mm. Not once. So I do not question that ability. I do not question his ability on there. It is time for you to step up. Petrarca, your best is the best. Time for you to become the best player in the league. In terms of pass marks, May has made it very clear. It is time. You have to win. Melbourne's pass mark internally is to win. I think they need to make at least a prelim. Yeah. They need to make. They need to finish top four and make the prelim final. Well, they, they, they finished top four. It's more just making it deeper in the well, finals. They've got a, but they're not going to make yeah, – odds are that you, you'll make top four for prelim. Yeah. I'm just talking odds. Yep. This is your time, Melbourne. This is your time. Uh, any final thoughts before we pay a little bit of a tribute uh, to the highlight and successful I think that was. I think that was my final thoughts. I think that was – I don't think I need to say anything else. I think we can move on to the tribute. Um, Melbourne, you have all the ability in the world here. Yeah, this uh, is it. the destiny's in your hands, and, t- and prove everyone wrong. Hundred. Do you know what the world loves most? They love. Dog. They love. They love tearing down. Yeah. They have tall poppy syndrome, but they love more, just as much. Is it is the underdog story or a revival story? Do it, do it. Well, that's exactly why Collingwood's liked now. I think they flipped the script. They flipped the narrative. Not as much as you know, an Essendon supporter doesn't want to see a Collingwood supporter win. It was quietly enjoyable. Uh, we'll pay tribute now to the great man, Angus Brayshaw. What a career. And um, so we're sad just, to see it ending. We're just going to show his highlights of his of his career high. He had 25 touches on grand final day and kicked a goal. So we're just going to watch these highlights for a few minutes. Um, what a career he had. And he was a heart and soul player. Hence all the concussion. Like, you know, he put his body literally on the line. Um, yeah. And it was it was sad to see, but let's just enjoy what he was. Well, he was the he finished fourth in the BNF twenty twenty three, fifth in twenty twenty two, so he was only getting better. And um, yeah, sad to see, but he was an incredible player. Do full screen of it. Oh, we're not on camera. So often 
we see this happen and the team go to the other end and kick an easy goal. Salem with the next three goals. They're just one goal away from exploding again, I reckon. Jackson to the front. Brayshaw. Benton found it. Controlled it pretty well. May with the fist. McRae gets taken in the tackle. There will be a ball up. Can to Angus Brayshaw. He's got Big Mac. Fine. Brayshaw has a bounce. Has another one. Into the forward pocket. Kick had too much heat on it. Sloppy kick by Daniel. Brayshaw able to pick it up. He too was sloppy. Petrarca tries to turn his man inside out. Got it back to Brayshaw. Johansson closes. Dogs did well. Howie flicks it over the top. Angus Brayshaw back with the flight. Inaccurate first half for the Demons. Big moment here. Oh, that is perfect. Absolutely perfect. And what a what a what an ending. Um, that goal. He's running back with the flight of the ball. Yeah. How, how fitting. Um, yeah. Have it. Sorry to see you leave, Angus Brayshaw, but you were a pleasure to watch. And um, yeah, just wish you all the best in the future. Um, thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed um, tonight's episode of the Melbourne Footy Club preview. Um, leave a comment. Do you think Melbourne are finished? Or can they become the club that they should be and um, re- return back to, you know, um, the winner's list? Um, please like, subscribe and leave a comment. Ring the um, fucking bell. And tomorrow... <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, and tomorrow we're going to review the North Melbourne Football Club. A um, lot, uh, lot of, you know, Clarko will be back for a full the year after, you know, issues off field last year and... Exciting times for North of um, you know through the draft, um, but they've had their own scandal today. But we'll we'll, um, we'll leave that to tomorrow. We'll leave that to tomorrow. Thank you guys and have a great night. See you guys. See you in the next one.